last week, excuse me, if you missed last week's message, it was about the priorities. In other words, the little things that have to come first, and we went into how the little things matter. And if you don't do the little things now, the big things you're hoping for, dreaming for, and that God has in store can't come to pass, right? There is no fruit that comes from a tree that was never a seed that was never planted. Everything that has to come to pass has to first be planted in seed form for it to give uh, birth to, to the fullness of what it was supposed to be. Uh, and, and this week, as I was just asking our God, what do you want me to share this week? I just could not. I let, we're going to call this one like Priorities 2.0, if you will. But there's a word that God has been impressing upon my spirit this whole week. I could not get it off my spirit. I kept hearing this word, hearing this word, hearing this word. And, and it's this word urgency. Say that word urgency. Okay, you guys know what it means, right? It means to get stuff done with urgency like right that's redundant I know but it means to get stuff done and get stuff done now okay I, I asked myself this question and you guys got to ask yourself this question why is it that we live like we aren't going to die think about that for a second why, why is it that we live our lives as if our lives are not going to come to an end at some point if we lived our lives with the understanding that our lives will come to an end at some point, I submit to you, that we would actually truly begin to live our lives. We would put aside a lot of the pettiness that we deal with on a regular basis, a lot of the gripes, a lot of the arguments, a lot of the heartache. We would put a lot of that aside because we would realize we don't got time for that nonsense. But we live as though we're never going to come to an end. I shared it a couple weeks ago, um, this really quick, brief snippet that, that time is a valuable currency, but it is not the most important currency. Excuse me, money is a valuable currency, but it is not the most important currency that you have. Time is. Time and faith are the most valuable currency you have. Why? Because time is a fleeting currency. It means it's going away. You're not getting it back. You can get money back so long as you have more time. If you run out of time, you ain't get no more money back. Yes or no? You, you, you're not getting time back. That is going. It's gone. It, we just lost five seconds right now. You realize that? If we don't understand this, we will continue to our li live our lives without a sense of urgency that I really believe God wants us to, to live in. Um, for some of you guys who don't know, uh, I'm coaching my, my son's wrestling team, my son's high school wrestling team, and, you know... I, I love a man, and I, I love the assignment, but the reality is sometimes I get so frustrated. Everybody who's ever coached somebody, taught somebody, led somebody, raise your hand if you feel the struggle when people do not listen, okay, when they don't listen. And I've said it before, I'll say it again. We want it oftentimes more for them than they want it for themselves. And, and, and what, I, what I understand this week, it, it, you know, they want to take their sweet time and everything. Like we ain't got stuff to do. Right? You get to a place in the practice where maybe they're slacking, and I, and I got to a rhythm where they know if, if they're slacking, I'll start yelling out, all right, in three, two, one. And if they're not in their position in that three, two, one, they already know there's going to be a price to pay. They need to get up. They need to start doing what we do, and, and they don't like that. So guess what they do? When I say, all right, in three, two, one, what do you think they did? They got down real quick. They got to wherever they had to be real quick because they didn't want the consequences for their lack of urgency. And I share this because we have to learn to have a level of urgency or a sense of urgency because it, we got stuff to do. On my team, if I don't get them in shape fast enough, when they get on the mat, guess what? They're not going to last. And they're going to hate life. And they're definitely not going to win if we don't get the technique and the practice in and be able to get the time in that it requires to be excellent at what they're trying to be excellent at. How many of you guys understand what I'm saying? Like if we don't have a sense of urgency, we don't get to the wins, we don't get to the promises, we don't get to the goals where we want to get to because we think we have all this time, but we don't do in the time what we have to do with the time and we miss the opportunities for the win. Are you, are you hearing what I'm saying? This word urgency has been really on my heart because in our lives we will miss opportunities to get better, to get the wins, to get to the promises. We need a sense of urgency 
And I titled today's message, We Need a Pep in Our Step. Look to the person next to you and say, you need a pep in your step. Say it, but say it with like attitude or swag or whatever. Just say, you need a pep in your step. Look at them and say it. Did they say it to you? If not, elbow them. You have full house authority to elbow them if they did not say it to you. Come on, you've been wanting to elbow them anyway. Just elbow them. <laughs> I, need, I feel like I need to elbow somebody. Who's going to volunteer real quick? I want to join the fun, right? Why are you pointing over at Oliver, man? Yo, he got, watch out for Vic, Oliver. I'm just saying. We need to have a pep in our step. Because there's promises waiting for you guys. As we learn to put the first things first, the prior itties, the little things that have to come first, you have to understand that you have to have a pep in your step because there are promises waiting for you. Go with me to the first um, uh, scriptures of the day. We're going to go to John chapter 5, verses 1 through 8. And before I go there, how many guys know that there have been things in your life that you know that you probably should have done already and you have not yet gotten them done? How many guys know some of that? Come on. If, if you don't, that means you got all your dreams and everything all in place, right? How many guys understand there's things that you were supposed to have gotten done by now and you've not gotten them done? Why? Because there was no urgency. There was no what? There was no pep in your step. Again, turn to somebody and say you have to have a pep in your step. You got to have that pep. Let's go. You guys know what it means to have that pep in the step, right? You got to have that urgency. I did not realize, but apparently pep in your step is like an old man's term. Did you guys know that? Apparently. I don't know. All right, whatever. All the young people say, yep. Dang. Just like that. They threw it hard. John chapter 5, verse 1 to 8. You guys with me? I'm reading from the New King James Version. Make sure we got the right version up there. Perfect. All right. So, after this. There was a feast of the Jews, and Jesus went up to Jerusalem. Now there in Jerusalem, by the sheep gate, there was a pool, which is called in Hebrew Bethesda. So this is the pool of Bethesda, having five porches. And in these, in these porches, in these places, laid a great multitude of sick people, blind people, lame, paralyzed, waiting for the moving of the water. For an angel went down at a certain time into the pool and stirred up the water. Then whoever stepped in first after the stirring of the water was made well of whatever disease they had. Now a certain man was there who had an infirmity for 38 years. When Jesus saw him lying there and knew that he already had been in that condition a long time, he said to him, do you want to be made well? The sick man, the sick man answered him, Sir, I have no man to put me into the pool when the water is stirred up. But when I am coming, while I'm coming, another steps down before me. Jesus said to him, rise, take up your bed and walk. And immediately the man was made well. He took up his bed and he walked. There is a lot that we can learn from this situation that we can learn from this man if we just read carefully. Are you guys ready to read carefully with me? All right, good. So we look to the condition of the man. What was the condition of the man? For 38 years, he had an infirmity. Does it tell us what kind of infirmity? No. He tells us he had a condition for 38 years, an infirmity. And, and, and Jesus says to him that while he was there, he looked at him. He knew that this man had that condition for a long time. A lot of us will think, well, he must have been lame. He must have been paralyzed. That's probably why he couldn't get up and walk to the water. And there was a lot of sick people, lame, paralyzed, blind people who were there by the pool of the water. But, but what happened? We don't know what his condition was. Let me give you a tip when you're reading the Bible. When you're reading through scriptures and there is a, a specific level of ambiguity, meaning it is not clear what the condition was, know that whatever condition you have, you can replace it to the story and it applies to you as well. Did you get that? He does not give us the specific nature of the condition. All we know is that he was in a condition a long time and it was an infirmity. That word infirmity used in this particular scripture means that he was impotent, meaning he was powerless. He was without strength. He was needy. He was poor. Look at the person next to you. Do they look broke? I'm saying, no, don't do that. Don't do that. <laughs> he was needy. He was broke. And he was broke for a long time. How many of you guys have been broke for a week and that was too long? Homeboy was broke for 38 years. Okay, he was broke for a long time and he couldn't do nothing about it. 
Whatever disease he had, whatever issues he had, it said there by the pool that there were all kinds of sick people, blind people, lame, paralyzed, waiting for the morning, the moving. And it says when the water moved, whatever disease they had, if they could first get into the water, they would be healed. Whatever disease, meaning physical disease, mental disease. Do you guys understand that God is being specifically ambiguous here? He is not telling us the exact condition of this man because he wants you to understand that no matter what sickness you have, no matter what powerlessness you feel, no matter how broken broke you are, no matter whatever kind of disease you got, whether it be a physical disease or a mental disease. How many of you guys understand this thing going around about mental wellness and mental health, right? No matter what condition you have, Jesus is interested in moving in them. Well, what was the problem of this man? He could not access the promise. Why could he not access the promise? Because he couldn't get into the water first. Stay with me. What was his problem? Let me ask you this question. Was the man able to move? What? Was he able to move? Give me a yes or no. Oh, I don't know. We, we don't know. Lie. We know. That was a trap. My bad, Vic. You fell right into it. We know he was able to move. Let me tell you why. Look what, Let's read scripture, right? What did he say to him? Now a certain man was there who had an infirmity 38 years when Jesus saw him lying there and knew that he had already been in that condition for a long time. He said to him, do you want to be made well? The sick man answered, sir, I have no man to put me into the pool. When the water is stirred up, but while I am coming, he said he had nobody to bring him to the pool, but he had a way of starting to come so we know he could move. He said, while I am coming, another steps down before me. What was the problem? Whatever his condition, whatever it was, it had caused him to not, no longer have a pep in his step. Stay with me. We know he was able to move because it says that while he was coming. So he was on his way. The problem was he just wasn't moving fast enough. Are you seeing what I'm saying? Had he gotten there first, he would have been healed. He wasn't fast enough. He was blaming the condition that he couldn't get there, but no matter what, he just wasn't fast enough. He wasn't the only one who was in that condition. He was just too slow to get out of it. I want you to start thinking about your own place and your own condition right now. Because many of us are, are still suffering with a condition because we have no urgency. We have no pep in our step to get out of it. I'm going to help you for a second because Jesus was interested in healing him. So he said, it didn't matter if you didn't have urgency or not. I got you. But how many of you guys are still broke because you haven't started the business that God already told you to start? How many of you guys are still depressed because you haven't cut out the sin that you know you should have cut out? Are you, are you hearing me? Are you hearing me? Guys, I want you to hear this, man. This guy had a condition. We know he can move, but he just wasn't fast enough. He had plenty of excuses, though. How many of you guys got some excuses for days? How many of you guys know? You just know because you're just good at them. Like, you're like, you wrote the book on excuses. And you got an excuse not to write the book. If you just wrote the book on excuses, you could make money and stop being broke. I'm just saying. He had plenty of excuses. He said, while I'm coming, another steps down before me. You know what that sounds like? Like every time I try, nothing happens. Every time I try this, somebody beats me to it. I had a good idea and somebody stole it. I had a good idea and somebody took credit for it. Plenty of excuses. Man, no pep in his step. He was empty. How do we know he was empty? And how many of you guys understand that? When, when, when you've got a place to be and when, you, when you've got a condition that needs changing, you will always remain empty until you get that condition changed. Jesus showed up in this man's life to make him whole. How do we know that? Jesus said, hey, do you want to be made well? What was his response? Well, every time I try, somebody beats me to it. The word well used in the scripture means to be made whole. You guys remember like, like, like probably like, third grade spelling class when it taught you the difference between whole, complete, and whole, like how to spell whole where there's a hole in it. You guys remember that? Like when you take away the W, there's something missing, so you have a hole. No? None of you guys don't remember that far back or just don't know how to spell which one? <laughs> just saying, right? When something is complete, it has the W. 
It has the hole. When it's not complete, you take away the W. It's a hole. He was empty. He had a deficit because this man was not made well. He was not made whole. That's why Jesus asked him, do you want to be well? Do you want to be whole? He had a deficit. Every time you are not whole, complete with a W, you're going to have a deficit. What is that deficit? You're going to have a deficit in your finances. You're going to have a deficit in your emotions. You're going to have a deficit in your relationships. Something's going to be missing if you're not made whole. What am I trying to tell you guys this morning? Guys, many of us in this room have to get some urgency to get things right. We got to get a pep in our step. He had the opportunity. He missed it. Thank God that Jesus is a savior. Thank God that Jesus will step in where you don't step in. Is anybody hearing me? This guy had no urgency for 38 years. And he had excuses. I'm not saying he would have made it anyway. But if he had a better attitude about it, maybe he would have got further quicker. Maybe he would have positioned himself closer. Like if I was this man, I'd have been, I would have been right by the water side. You understand what I'm saying? Like, like when the water starts moving, I'm just doing this. Bloop, and I'm in. That's it. I'm just saying. If the water's right here, my toe's going to be right there. As soon as that sucker is blue, that's it. You can't beat me. We give ourselves so many excuses because we don't want to move in the direction that we're supposed to be moving in. And I said it last week. We get familiar. We get comfortable. And we don't do what we need to do to get what we need to get. Are you hearing me? We need to learn to be high performers in this thing we called our walk with faith. Thank God that he had, that this man had a change in his story, that he had a pep in his step when it mattered most. Why? Because when Jesus said, do you want to be made well? Do you want to be made whole? He gave all his excuses. He just looked at him. He said, listen, stand up, pick up your bed, and walk. What did he do? Let's go back to the scripture. What did he do? And immediately, what did he do? Immediately, the man was made well. He took up his bed and he walked. He had pep in his step. He had urgency when it mattered. He immediately responded to the word of Jesus. Can I just tell you that if you do not respond quickly to what God is telling you to do, you will remain not well. That is a principle of God. Are you hearing me? We've got to learn to respond quickly to what God is asking us to do. I want to share this with you because I really think some of us have an issue. Jesus said to him, hey, pick up your bed and walk. And it was resolved. Some of us will sit down and we'll have a conversation with, hey, do this or that for that to work. And you say, oh, I don't know if I really want to do it. You got no urgency. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Whatever condition you have, if we sit down and we sat down in a council, I can't tell you how many times I've sat down with people and counseled people and I've said, look, the word of God says do this and that. And we don't have the urgency to do this and that. What happens? We remain not well. Am I making myself clear? It's a, if, if you just do what God said already to do, you will be made whole. But you want to remain in a hole. Guys, we got to get some pep in our step. I'm just saying. You need a pep in your step because times of refreshing are available to you. Look at this. Acts chapter 3 verses 19 and 21. Acts chapter 3, verses 19 to 21. Help me out in the back. It says the following. Repent, therefore, and be converted, that your sins may be blotted out, so that times of refreshing may come from the presence of the Lord, and that he may send Jesus Christ, who was preached to you before, whom heaven must receive until the times of restoration of all things. Which God has spoken by the mouth of all his holy prophets since the world began. 
Let me make this verse really easy for us to understand really quick. It says there's two times coming. The first time is a time of refreshing. The second time is a time of restoration. The time of restoration is when Jesus comes back to gather all those who have believed in his name. To do away with all condemnation eternally. To forgive you eternally. And to bring you into the glorious presence of your father. Did you hear that? That's the time of restoration. I'm going to get back to that in a second. But he says there is a time of refreshing that will come from the presence of the Lord. How do we get to the time of refreshing? You have to repent. When we talk about repent, it's, it sounds so religious. Repenting, very simply, it's just to change the way you think about a matter. It's to change course. You understand? Like, like if you're in the car and you're heading south to Key West, but you were trying to get to Disney World... You have to repent. You have to change that direction, change course. You got to make a U-turn somewhere to go in the right direction. You have to urgently change course. He says, repent therefore and be converted that times of refreshing may come. We got to stop going in the direction that we shouldn't be going in. But here's the reality. If there's no change of course, if there's no repentance, you know what you're saying? You're saying that you are okay with the path you are going. And therefore, if you are okay with the path you are going, you have no right to complain about it. Did you hear me? Like, like, don't cry me a river because I ain't swimming in it. You, you don't do that. Like, don't complain if you're okay with the course you're going. If you do not repent, if you do not change the way you're thinking about a matter, you're going to keep going in that direction. Be happy with it. Live with it. Are you hearing me? We cannot get comfortable going in a direction that is not taking us in the direction God wants us to go. There has to be an urgency to deal with a couple of things. There's two things that God spoke to me we need to deal with. There needs to be an urgency to deal with your sin. There needs to be an urgency to deal with my sin. What is sin? Sin is the thing you're doing that you know you shouldn't be doing. It is also the thing that you are not doing that you know you should be doing. There is an urgency to deal with our sin. If we are not doing the thing that God tells us we're supposed to be doing, we are in disobedience. Guess what disobedience is? Rebellion. And rebellion is sin. It's sin. I love what he says. If you just change your course, if you just change direction as it relates to sin, what's going to happen? There's going to be times of refreshing that are going to come from his presence. How many guys are so tired of just being beat down all the time, not having enough, not doing enough, not seeing enough? You got dreams and they're not coming to pass and you're just always struggling or you're sick and your health's not getting better. Are you hearing me? He says that if we would just learn to deal with our sin, if we would change course from our sin, a time of refreshing would come. It's as simple as that. That word time of refreshing, if you guys ever heard me teach on this, is the word kairos. The time is kairos. It is a specific, special opportunity for refreshing to come. The word refreshing means that I get to take a deep breath. How many guys would be happy to just wake up one day? And just be able to be in full calm and full peace. In the presence of God, just be able to take a deep breath. How many, how, how many guys would that make you just happy? Just like you don't have to worry about your health issues. You can just take a deep breath. You don't have to worry about your financial issues. You can just take a deep breath. You ain't got to worry about your, 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 your marital issues. You can just take a deep breath. When he says there's times of refreshing, that's what he's saying. There are special moments, special opportunities where you can just sit back and take a deep breath if you would just hurry up and repent. There has to be urgency. There has to be a pep in a step. Look, again, if you're okay with the situation, fine. Put no pep in your step. It is what it is. But if you are tired of not being able to breathe, he says that if you would repent... Times of refreshing would come. We need to have urgency to deal with our sin. The next thing that God was speaking to me is that we need to have urgency to deal with the matter at hand. Sometimes it's not sin that's your problem. Sometimes it's just the matter at hand that you're not dealing with. 
In other words, stop putting things off. Proverbs 13, verse 4 says the following. It says, the soul of a lazy man desires, wants. Proverbs 13, 4. The soul of a lazy man desires and has nothing. But the soul of the diligent shall be made rich. Can I say that one more time? The soul of the lazy man, look at the person next to you. They look lazy. You can judge them for a moment. It's okay. Some of y'all already know. Some of y'all look at them like, oh. The soul of a lazy man desires and has nothing. But the soul of the diligent shall be made rich. Stop putting it off. There has to be an urgency to deal with the matter at hand. Can I, can I confess something to you guys today or no? And y'all ain't going to judge me? Like y'all been judging each other all service? Laura said maybe just a little bit. So for those of you guys who don't know, I'm a lawyer by profession. That's what I do from Monday through Friday. And I've been doing that now for a little over 20 years. And I have been feeling stuck. Anybody else just feel stuck where you're at right now? Like, just stuck. Like, just like, this is blah. You know, like, and I love what I do. Make no mistake about it. I love being able to help people in the way I help people. But I've felt now in this past season that something's missing. Anybody ever feel like something's missing? Like, like, like there's something that's just not there. There's something, like, what does that mean? It means I'm not whole. But uh, I'm not sinning in that area. No, I'm not sinning in that area. But maybe I'm just not well. And, and, and what God has been really impressing upon me is that I need to be a little bit more urgent about my professional side of things. Like I need to figure out what it is that I need to do. What is that I need to do different? How do I need to scale? How do I need to change course? What do I need to do? And, and, and in this past several weeks, you know, I've, I've been doing like these, these business classes and other types of classes. Guys, can I just tell you, you got to do what you need to do to get to where you got to get to. And stop making excuses for not doing it. Are you hearing me? If you feel like you're not well, then stop making excuses for staying sick. Put some pep in, just get urgency. So the Lord prompted me to do a particular thing. I did that particular thing. And had I not done that particular thing, I would still be questioning where I'm at. But now, I got to tell you, when there is an anticipation of expectation, you start moving a little bit faster. When you start making a step in the right direction, you start moving a little faster. You start picking up steam. But you got to kick yourself in the butt to get a little urgent in the moment to pick up that steam. You can't get comfortable. You can't lay around. Oh, well, there's, there's nobody to get me there. No, get yourself there. God wants you to get there. He'll push you along. He'll, he'll motivate you. He'll encourage you. But sometimes you got to do what you got to do. Are you hearing me? God will give you the strength to do what you got to do. He ain't going to do it for you. Have you ever felt like you have to, like, if you don't move now, it's over? Like, if you don't get this done now, it's going to, like, everybody waits to the end before they make that decision. No, you got to start now to be urgent now. They said times of refreshing will come. I'm encouraged by that. Because every now and then I need to just take a breath. Here's what he said, though. And if, if you missed it, I'm going to come back again. He says times of refreshing may come from the presence of the Lord. May come. If you do not rent, repent, they will not come for certain. We have to repent for them to come. But then he also said, and I'll close with this, that times of restoration will come. That time of restoration is the time where Jesus comes back, takes all those who believed in him, Brings you into the place of glory. 
That's going to happen, but make no mistake about it. Times of refreshing are available to you now. If you've ever been taught that times of refreshing will come when we're in glory, that's true, they will. But the times of refreshing are now. What is our, what's our vision here at Thrive Church? You guys have heard it many times. It's to inspire you to thrive in what? In this life and the next. God's got times of, of, of restoration for you. But he's also got times of refreshing for you now. Can you just take a moment right where you are? Go ahead and stand to your feet. Stand to your feet, and I want you to reflect for a moment. What is your condition? What's your condition? What's your condition for which you've allowed your how, yourself to have one too many excuses? What's your condition? What's your condition for which you have been way too slow to take the first step? What's your condition? I said it before, I'll repeat it again. We have to have urgency. We have to have urgency to deal with our sin. We have to have urgency to deal with the matters at hand. Do not put them off. And I want to close with this. We need to have urgency to get right with him. We said, didn't you talk about into the sin? Well, you know, when you get rid of your sin, you'll have, you'll get right with him. But I want to talk to you today if you've never gotten right with him to begin with. 2 Corinthians chapter 6 verse 2 says the following. It says that in an acceptable time I have heard you. And in the day of salvation I have helped you. Behold, now, when? Now is the accepted time. Behold, now is the day of salvation. Now is the time to allow God to hear you. Now is the time of your salvation. Some of us have been failing to be urgent in our walk with him. Some of us have been failing in our urgency to get things right. In our past, this past week's midweek discipleship, We shared, we shared on, on a particular topic, and, and we just said, you know what? This thing about God is just not a joke. And some of us have played around too long. We've just played around too long. We wonder why we can't breathe because we've been playing around for too long. We act like we're guaranteed tomorrow and we're not. And therefore, we're not urgent in today. I want to encourage you guys to start the project you never started that you know you're supposed to start. To heal a relationship that you know you're supposed to heal. To fix today what is broken. Do not wait till tomorrow. Tomorrow is not guaranteed. And if you've never given your Lord, your life to the Lord Jesus Christ today... Today is the moment for salvation. He said, I wish God would hear me. Well, he said, there's an acceptable time to be heard, and that time is now. Let me tell you, if anything about what we talked about today has made sense, stirred up in you anything, I got to tell you, it's, it's not me, it's God who's speaking to you today because it is his spirit that will convict you unto righteousness. The Holy Spirit of God is here. He wants to talk to you. He wants to encourage you. He wants to get you on the right path. Stop making the mistakes. Stop, stop making up excuses to not get healed, to not be made whole. Stop making up excuses. It's about he or she. No, what about you? Oh, but if things were different, but they're not. They will be when you start taking action in him. 
but things are not fair. Y'all already know how, how I feel about that phrase. I hate that phrase. It's not fair. It's not fair. Oh, God, I hate that phrase. If you were ever sitting down with me in a counseling session and you used the word phrase, I'm going to kick you out the house real quick. I hate that phrase. How about, how about, how about we just do what God's told us to do? And instead of things being fair, they'll be just. They'll be right. Oh, my gosh. Here's the, here's the problem. We say it's not fair because we don't like what we got. God is not a God of fairness. God is a God of justice. He's a God of righteousness. What is just? What does that mean? That means you get what you get and you don't get upset because what you got is probably something that you've already sown. Do not be fooled for whatever a man shows that he will reap. Did you hear that? Like whatever you put in, you're going to get out. Today is the day that I truly believe that some of you guys need to just get right. Including myself. Every day I'm trying to get right with God. Every day. But it all starts. Whether you're in-house or online, it all starts with accepting Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. Plain and simple. He says, nobody comes to the Father if not through me. I am the way, the truth, and the life. It's in him. So, Pastor, all right. I heard everything you guys say. If I want to give my life to Jesus, how do I do it? Very simple, and thank you for asking. The word of God says all you got to do is believe in your heart that Jesus was the Son of God, that he died on the cross as the perfect payment for our sins. He was a sacrifice that our sins needed. He, was, he paid the price for, for the consequences of our actions. He paid that price. And it says that when we believe in him and we confess that truth that he rose again, we believe and speak that truth, we would be saved. Pastor, that sounds too easy. That's the point. God doesn't want everybody, anybody to perish. He wants everybody to know him and have eternal life in him. He doesn't want to make it complicated. We complicate things because we feel like we're going to live forever. If you want to give your life to Jesus Christ, I'm going to say a simple prayer that you can follow after me. And if you want to do that today, if you want to get right with him today, because you know that today is the day of salvation for you, then repeat this prayer after me with a sincere heart. Others around you are going to say their prayer too. They're going to encourage you. They've probably done it a thousand times, maybe a hundred times. But they're going to say it to encourage you this morning so you know that you are not alone. And if you're online or in-house and you want to give your life to Jesus today, if you want to reset with Jesus today, just say this prayer together with me. Just say something like this. Say, thank you, Father, for sending your son Jesus to die on the cross and pay the price for my sins. Today, Jesus, I accept you as my Lord and my Savior. Amen. Father, I thank you for everybody who said that prayer today with the understanding and the sincerity of heart. I pray right now, Lord, that whatever their condition, whatever their need, Lord, that you would begin to move in them, that you would stir up in them a sense of urgency, Lord, to seek out what you need them to do. That truth that is already revealed in your word, Lord, that you would speak to them, encourage them, and get them motivated to do and take this next step in their walk of faith with you. Father, guide them and protect them this week. I thank you for them, Lord, and I welcome them into your family. If you were in-house and you said this prayer today for the first time, if you know you gave your life to Jesus, we'd love to know about it after the service. We're going to stay in this spirit of worship, but we would love to know about your decision after the service. And if you're online, the only way we can know about your decision is if you link up with us or drop us a comment below. Because likewise, we would like to know about your decision because we want to walk out this life of faith with you.